Hello everybody, it's Andy here from The Movement Project and today I thought I'd talk about social isolating and why this is so important in regards to trying to limit or slow down the spread of COVID-19 and why the government has decided to implement this now. So there was a great article I came across in the Washington Post. This was after seeing a tweet from Barack Obama, who I'm a big fan of. It's nice to see an American politician posting something useful. You are a rude terrible person and what this article discussed was it talked about flattening the curve and this was in relation to that exponential growth that people keep talking about so when people say oh there's exponential growth in COVID-19 what they're talking about is a if you were to look at it as a graph you would see a slow increase in the amount of infected people and then you'll see a very sharp increase and what this is demonstrating that is so say if one person then infects two other people with COVID-19 you get exponential growth so so those two people would go to four people and then those four people would go to 16 people etc and then you see a very sharp increase and the reason why you don't want this is because if you get a sudden influx in the amount of people that are for one infected with COVID-19 but then also have serious side effects then you might need uh, what I mentioned in another video with these um, intensive care units so things like ventilators and we just don't have enough for if there was a lot of people to be infected all at once so the main thing is what we're trying to do is flatten this curve and by doing that hopefully you'll have a little bit more of a slower trickle and that, that then once again you won't get that sudden increase and then the emergency services can hopefully cope a little bit better. So why I like this uh, Washington Post was because they use graphics or almost like a simulator. It showed that how having different approaches will affect the spread rates of COVID-19. So people will be represented by dots and healthy people will be almost like a turquoise color and then sick people will be a brown color and then almost like a pinky color is people that have recovered. So as you see here, I'll just put a graph here. So then you see that healthy people are then affected by someone who's sick and then they carry on and move on and then affect another person and then so on. So the second graph shows a sick person affecting a healthy person, but then that original sick person then recovers and then you can't have those people who recovered getting sick again. This is because their body has built up immunity and they can fight the virus. So once people are recovered, they can't be reinfected with COVID-19. So the first graph I'm gonna show you, this just demonstrates that if we did nothing and just allowed people to move around freely and we didn't put any quarantine measures, what would happen. As you can see here, this represents 200 people. You see one person infected and then suddenly it starts to spread. And as you can see by the numbers, the amount of sick people is dramatically increasing. And then just to the right of that, you'll see the graph. So this is the bell curve that we keep talking about. So you see a sudden increase, and then it does start to come down as people, as you can see here, become recovered. And then the everyone has had COVID-19, and then everyone recovers. So I'll just show you that once again, so you can just see. So once again, you can see all the spread, then it quickly everyone becomes infected, and then you get to the peak fairly quickly, then it starts reducing down. So the second graph will demonstrate what false quarantine effect will have on the population and the spread of COVID-19. So this is similar to what the Chinese did. So as you can see, this here represents the, the false quarantine and you see everyone on the outside has become, has become infected. And then inevitably, obviously, some people will get out and start spreading COVID-19. And then as it gets out into the general population, everyone quickly uh, becomes infected. And then the same process as it in the first one happens. But as you could see on this, and especially in the graph, you almost have two peaks. Now, this is still a lot better than the first one because you can deal with two of these big infection rates. So I'll just, once again, just activate it so you could just once again see it. Hopefully the health services would be able to cope with the first bell curve and then the second one. As you can see, the amount of healthy people slowly reduces at the beginning and then there's a sudden increase. But once again, a lot more beneficial or a lot more effective at slowing the spread than the first one but obviously this will vary so the third graphic will show what happens when we self-isolate so this represents roughly about a quarter of the population self-isolating so 25 percent so as you can see by the dots there is a lot less people moving around as a result when some people get infected when they're in self-isolation they don't spread it around so then you get the spread rate really reduces so as you can see by the graph the overall curve is really flattened out. And you can see here that the numbers are actually pretty even in regards to sick, healthy, and recovered. This makes it a lot easier for the emergency services, NHS to cope. 
So once again, just run that again. Every time that you do run these on that website, which you can go to, which I'll put in the description box below, you'll be able to see different ways that it plays out. But generally, it will play out fairly similar, but not all the time, which actually is quite accurate when we think about that we can't always control for every factor. And these simulations are probably only considering a fraction of the amount of factors that can play into the the spread of COVID-19, especially in the real world. So the last graphic I'm gonna show you, so they then took the self-isolation to more of an extreme. So they demonstrate that if you were to stop seven out of eight people of the population from moving, so only one eighth of people can move around, so that's roughly about 88%, then what effect would this have on COVID-19 in regards to its spread rate? So as you can see, the majority of dots aren't moving. and you can um, also see that the amount of people are getting infected and the rate of it is dramatically reduced. You can't hardly even see the curve starting to go up. And as you can see, the amount of people that are recovered versus the amount of people that are sick are actually in favor of the recovered. And obviously this would be amazing. So you may ask, why don't we do this? Now, there's probably a few reasons for this. Um, for one, it may not be practical in just regards to keeping our civilization our economy going so we need to try to carry on as much as possible in the future we'll need to pay for the nhs so we need to keep some of our economy moving so the people that are getting infected that we have an nhs to treat them with we can always strive to get to a higher number in regards to the people that are self-isolating. So once again, I'll just put up those graphs so you can see the comparison in regards to the bell curve between the free-for-all, the forced quarantine, self-isolation, and then extreme self-isolation. You can definitely see that self-isolation seems to work, but doing nothing isn't the answer. Okay, everybody, so I hope you found that video useful. I hope you also found those graphs useful. So thank you very much to the Washington Post for doing those because I think sometimes people, if they can see the difference they they are making by self-isolating then it makes it almost in a way a little bit easier hopefully but i'm completely aware not everyone can self-isolate there we've got our emergency services nhs staff that are still going into hospitals every day knowing that they're going to be at more at risk at getting infected by covid19 you know it's amazing that we have people in the world that will be so selfless like that all we can do so joe public is to make sure that we are self-isolating that we're washing our hands all the usual advice and then hopefully this will just slow the spread of covid19 and help us get through this really troubling and hard period of time as always if you enjoy the content in this video remember to like it and to share it thanks very much for watching